Yo, what's going on? This is John Gamester81. I recently visited Digital Press Video Games. This is located in Clifton, New Jersey. If you're anywhere in the New Jersey area, or even New York City for that matter, do yourself a favor, check this place out. This is an amazing place. I've been here a couple times before, and every time I come here, there's new games, uh, and it's amazing. Here is Freddy. His YouTube channel is 78 Strider Strikes Back. I put out a tweet and a Facebook post uh, that I was going to be here at Digital Press at a certain time uh, on a certain day. And Freddie was cool enough to join me. So Freddie was great, great meeting man. I'll put a link below to his channel. Really cool guy. Uh, here, we're going to start with some classic Nintendo games. Their selection is by far uh, above anything I've ever seen at a local store. Cruise Exotica, Shadow of the Empire, obviously some classic N64 games. That's Uniracers right there in front for the Super Nintendo. One of, the, one of my favorite games for the Super Nintendo. Definitely check it out. They got a ton of N64 games here. One thing I don't like about N64 games are that the... the Label, you can't see the game if it's laying down. You have to look at the face of the label, which is kind of un unfortunate. They got this cool cabinet. They got a whole bunch of PSP games, Game Gear games, uh, you know, TurboGrafx-16 games, or Virtual Boy Game Boy games. You're going to see in this this video the, the the amount of different kind of variety of games and systems that they carry for is, is really mind-boggling, to be honest with you. Uh, there's Atari 5200 games. Um, you know, kind of an interesting uh, system for sure. I, I enjoy the 5200. There's issues with the controls, the controller way breaking, but I really like it. ColecoVision games, one of my favorite systems of all time. Uh, you got classic uh, Intellivision games. This is 7800, Atari 7800 games. Kind of came out kind of an odd time. They, they should, Atari should have released the 7800 way before. You got some interesting cassette tapes. That's for the um, Supercharger. That's the Arcadia, and that's an interesting device. It's an attachment that goes on to the Atari 2600, and it boosts the memory and RAM, and it kind of it's a it's a really cool thing. I've, I've done a video over it a little while ago. Really cool system, but it's cool to see that they have cassettes for that. Oh, classic Jaguar games. You got Doom, and uh, some interesting ones. This is a Hover Strike, classic. There's a Studio Two game right there. Kind of odd that you see that in the wild. Say uh, Sega Master System, uh, really underrated in the states. Power Drive Rally, you know, I don't think I have that game. Uh, Jaguar, you know, there's some really good games and there's some really bad games for the Jaguar, so you have to kind of watch out. Uh, here's an interesting one. This is Ultra Vortech. That's a really bad Mortal Kombat clone. Uh, if you have a Jaguar, you might want to check it out. It's If you like Mortal Kombat, <laughs> you're not going to like this game at all. But the graphics are decent, but playability, it's not that good. I don't recommend it, but it's, it's definitely interesting. Here are a whole bunch of Atari 2600 games. A ton of them. Here's Cookie Monster, Munch, classic. That's a, definitely brings back nostalgia. I remember playing that back in the day, actually, for the Atari 2600. Uh, a ton of games for the Atari 2600. And there's a Zonix. That's a two-in-one uh, cartridge that has games on both ends. Kind of an interesting uh, cart kind of design, for sure. And they got a whole bunch of standees, Killer Instinct standee, uh, PlayStation 2 games to... Uh, a lot of PlayStation 3 as well as we're coming up here. And, you know, all of these are, are, are used games that you can trade in and, and get store credit for. Xbox 360 games as well, which is cool. Everything's alphabetical, which is nice, so you can keep track of kind of what you're looking for. They have these really cool case glass cases, and this is where they keep a lot of their systems. Uh, th this case is more modern stuff, anywhere from, you know, uh, 3DS, the DS, to PlayStation 2. Some classic Xbox, original Xbox games and, and GameCube games. This is cool. This is an Atari pinball. You know, Atari only made a few pinball machines. They weren't in the pinball market for very long. This is a super wide body. Uh, really cool that they had that. Gamecom in the bottom right corner. Splatterhouse for the TurboGrafx-16. A uh, must-have for that system. A Game Boy complete in box. You also had uh, Street Fighter Alpha. Castlevania. Atari, that's Atari 7800 box. Donkey Kong 3 in box. There's a Nintendo Entertainment System in box. A N64 in box. Some Mega Man games. This is a really cool cabinet. It's almost like a museum. There's Primal Rage. That's unopened. Never opened Primal Rage. Final Fantasy 2. Probably one of my favorite games for the Super Nintendo. And there's Turbo Duo in box. There's some Homebrews. 3DO games. Jaguar games. Jaguar in box. Zelda. A super set. I haven't seen that in a while. There's there's a Rob the Robot box and Steel Battalion in box. That that's I think retails for about 150 or more. Some GameCube games. 
a ton of DVDs as well, a whole bunch of media, anything from PC games and whatnot. The classic PC games like Windows 95 and stuff like that, which is really cool. So this is an Atari 5200 in box, and you got a Commodore 64, one of my favorite old school. There is an arcade, that's a Belly Astro Arcade. That was just a display box that they weren't actually selling. Some of these they didn't have for sale. There's some homebrew games. There's an A380, which is a handheld kind of a, a homebrew you can put on ROMs. There's the Void, which I did a review on. That's a homebrew ColecoVision game. So I did a review with the creator of that game. And there is a Fairchild Channel F. Uh, the maker of the Fairchild Channel F passed away this past year. Intellivision, that's a, that's a keyboard for the Intellivision. Kind of a rare accessory for the Intellivision. Really cool to see that. Here's the front. And they got a bunch of arcades. You know, I shouldn't say a bunch, but they got a good handful. Some of them are on. That's a PlayStation 10. I own a PlayStation 10. A really fun uh, Nintendo. You know, you can put ROMs in there. It's a dual screen. This is a racer. They kind of modded and... They put a bunch of racing games in it, and they put digital press and the marquee. And here's another. This is a main cabinet, so you got a whole bunch of classic arcade games. And a Neo Geo, one of my favorite. This is a two-slot Neo Geo, one of my favorite arcades. And Marvel vs. Capcom, obviously a classic. Looks like that used to be a Street Fighter 2 at one point. They converted it. And most Street Fighter 2s were, were sets anyway, you know, where there was no really hard, original Street Fighter 2 cabinet. But here's some other uh, Dreamcast games. You have Sonic uh, Adventures 2. Uh, Shenmue. There's some Link and Zelda. This is for the that's for the CDI. Some Zelda games for the CDI. Uh, Lunar, which is a great great RPG. Uh, Final Fantasy for the Game Boy. Final Fantasy games for the Game Boy were a lot different. Virtual Boy, Commodore 128 computer, a little lesser known computer. That's the kind of the successor to the the Commodore 64. Turbo Graphics in box. Jag CD games. Uh, this is some Bible games for the Genesis. Awesome. Shining Force 2. That's a Sega CD. That's a the the top loading one with the first model one, which is kind of a rare, a di kind of hard to find those, especially ones that have a working uh, tray, because a lot of times those tray on those model one Sega CDs actually go out. They had a bunch of import games as well. This is kind of the import area where they had games from the Saturn and whatnot. There's a Jaguar uh, display in it. This would have been awesome. Uh, it wasn't for sale, and it would be kind of hard to take home with me, but <laughs> even if it was, but that's cool. These are Virtual Boy display as well which is fantastic, and I remember seeing those back in the day in the stores when they were actually the Virtual Boy back in 95 when it was around. And a whole bunch of different accessories for, for whatnot. Um, the X-Band, and that was kind of an internet thing for uh, the Super Nintendo, I believe. And some controllers. More display stuff. Uh, obviously some Wii games. You have more, uh, more PSP games. These are like consoles. They didn't have a box of the console, they put them in their own box. Some clones and you know consoles as well, Sega Master System games. These are Intellivision games all in box there and on the top. It's amazing how many box teams they had. It was really, really cool. That's a display for the 3DS, kind of really unique. I just noticed that. That's really cool. Here are some more Intellivision games, ColecoVision games, whatnot. Just really cool. 2600 box games. Really unusual that you'd see, and some of them, these, as you can see, are, are shrink wrap still, um, which is really cool. Goonies, I, see, I just saw Goonies. Football, Asteroids, Sega CD games. You can see that you notice that they don't have a lot of sports titles, which is good because a lot of times you see sports titles and mix in with these games. There's there's Lynx, which is a golf game for the Sega CD. Mass Rider. Tomcat Alley, which which is a very common game, Tri Trivial Pursuit for the Sega CD. That's kind of funny. A bunch of Super Nintendo box games, and and you can see some are still in, in shrink wrap, although opened. Granted, I believe Monopoly, and whatnot, Chess Master, and it's it's really unusual to see that many box games because they're cardboard boxes. Some Jaguar games as well. You definitely see more Genesis games in boxes. They have the the plastic clamshell. Here's Jag CD games. That's cool. Jag, Jaguar CD came out the kind of the, the very end of life of the Jaguar system, so it's kind of unusual to see that. Sega Master System, I mentioned before in this video, but I really like the Sega Master System. Just didn't have much support in the States, but did very well in Brazil and in Europe compared to in the States, North America. 
some classic Genesis games. It goes on and on. You can see you can spend like a full day here and still not really see everything. Even up top, they've got some classic games, Altered Beast, whatnot. One of my favorite games for the Genesis. Mist, a great game. I played it on the PC for sure. Magic Carpet. I can't say I've played that game before. And uh, these are just kind of random CD games. You have uh, more Saturn games. Virtual Cop 2, Virtual Cop 1. And later life of Genesis, a lot of the games switch over to cardboard games. So you'll see that. Some Genesis Game Gear games, which is Game Gear is essentially kind of like a Sega Master System portable one. Uh, Graph Lake is the same and sounds the same. They had a lot of ports from the Sega Master System switch over to the, the Game Gear. Quake 3 is a classic, great first person shooter. Bunch of movies for the PSP and Dreamcast, uh, one of my favorite systems of all time. Uh, classic, you have the Smash Pack, which is a good one to have because you get the classic Genesis games all in one there. And Tomb Raider, uh, just a really fun, you know, fun system. And kind of wish that Sega would get back into the console market. I'm sure uh, many of you guys probably wish the same or may not. Uh, let me know, put a comment below. Let me know what you guys think if they should have a Dreamcast 2 or not. You have some classic, uh, more PC gaming here. And uh, there's a flashback too, as well. Here are some 3DO games. That's Gold Star, but you know, Gold Star, Panasonic, a lot of different companies made the 3DO. There's Road Rash, one of the better games by like EA. One of the better games for the system. If you have a 3DO, definitely check out Road Rash. That and Return Fire are some of my two favorite games for uh, 3DO. And speaking of which, there is Return Fire right there. Also another good game to check out is Super Street Fighter 2, a great fighter for the 3DO. Uh, but it's cool they have the long boxes because you don't see the long boxes much anymore. You see the the cases and jewel cases but it's called uh, links video play that's uh fair more fairchild games possibly and engage games there's neo geo and freddy is a big fan of neo geo like myself so he he was there to kind of show me what games are good and whatnot uh, and these are the that's the aes games this is the mbs for more of the arcade and the difference is the arcade games they're they're not compatible with one another but the home ports the car cartridges have stickers and labels and are kind of nice and look presentable more presentable than the, the arcade vectrix is one of my favorite retro systems they had a bunch of vectrix games but not only that the vectrix they had the the actually the thing you would put on the screen which is very unique turbo graphic 16 games and cue cards and cds games. more retro games like ColecoVision and tardy 2600 games really there's some valley astrocade games uh, never opened which is interesting. Those are very kind of unique looking cartridges. They almost look like cassette tapes, but they're not. They're shaped like a cassette. Uh, really cool to see those. And some even they even had some Apple II games, which is pretty amazing. Uh, you don't you don't see those uh, everywhere. <laughs> and Game Boy Advance games, the Game Boy uh, All in Box. You can see they have a ton of these. A lot of big fans of of classic Game Boy, uh, myself included. And uh, really cool that they, they still had a lot of these in boxes. It's just amazing. It's like a museum going here. Every time I come here, I'm just in awe uh, of how much stuff and variety of games they have. Because some of these stuff they have are kind of more obscure. Uh, but being a gamer and a collector myself, I, I feel at home. I uh, love this ET for Atari 2600 display. That's a really cool piece. This is kind of a mini museum they have in the back as well. You go in there and they have uh, all these classics. That's a 3DO uh, prototype. Really rare. There's plumbers don't wear have, don't wear ties in the top. Super graphics, uh, PCFX, uh, Supervision, Star Fox. That's a promotional deal. I think believe that's a kind of a blockbuster deal that they had limited edition one. It's awesome. All those handhelds, Game and Watches. That's the Odyssey original one. Really cool to see all this in here. And they have like information about this. So it's like a mini museum. None of the stuff in this cabinet is for sale, by the way. So as you can see, guys, there is a ton of stuff here. Some art marquees for some class arcades. And I'm going to end this video with showing kind of what both Freddy and I picked up. So let's take a closer look. And thanks for watching, guys. Take care. All right, Freddy, what would you pick up, bro? Picked up uh, Wrath of the Black Manta for the NES. Got, uh, Nostalgic uh, to you, huh? Yeah, yes. It's actually a pretty bad game. But for me, you know, I used to play it as a kid. 
I've got a Neo Geo uh, memory card. Yeah. Are those hard to find? They're pretty hard, yeah. They're not very easy. Yeah, but, uh, I've never seen one so. But I got re on your recommendation, got Return Fire for the 3DO. One of the best games for the system, man. You'll enjoy yeah. it. Got uh, Football Frenzy for the Neo Geo. Good game. Uh, it's very similar to Super Techno, you know, Techno Bowl. Yeah. Or Techno Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Got uh, Pole Star for the MVS. Pole Star, nice. Good shooter. Yeah, I need more shooters on my Neo Geo. Katsuri Hanzo from Samurai Shodown 64. Nice. It's a pretty rare figure you're saying, huh? Yeah. Very hard to find. I was surprised they had it. Awesome. Got uh, Forest of Eden, a fighting game, like uh, Kabuki Clash for the Neo Geo, but nice. this one's for the uh, PC Engine CD-ROM. Bag never ends, bro. Yeah, right? Endless bag. Got <laughs> Killer Instinct for the Super Nintendo. Classic, man. All right, got, um... Last but not least. Deadly Moves for the Genesis. I love my fighters. The fighter, huh? Nice. Back in cool. the day. Thanks for coming out, man. Thanks for having me, bro. We Good time. going in. Go. <laughs> All right, so this is what I picked up, guys. I got, first and foremost, I picked up, um, Riding Hero for, this is the AES version. It's a, it's a racing game. It's really cool. I got that for uh, 30 bucks. Not bad. I also picked up a sealed copy of Primal Rage. This thing is in like amazing shape. It's like brand new. I wish they didn't put the sticker on it. I kind of like yeah. it. But 20 bucks for a brand new sealed copy of Primal Rage for Super Nintendo. Uh, fantastic game. Save four bucks at Six Flags. I wonder if I can actually use that today for already to go to Six Flags. I don't know. But that, that's really cool. And then uh, last but not least, I picked up uh, Neo Gem, the uh, memory card, Freddy's request. This is, uh, it was 30 bucks. It came with a box and everything. Cool thing about this, you can transfer it from your AES to your MBS and vice versa. So that's pretty cool. That's what I picked up. Uh -huh. 